Hi, welcome to Financial Education for Nation. My name's Warren Shu. I hope you're enjoying your lovely day today. And I'm here with the delightful Paul to cover a various topics, I guess, a numerous topics. So, Paul, what do you have in store for us today? Morning, Warren. Um, I want to talk about, uh, well, broadly pensions, but not boring pension stuff. We've got a, a I've got a few things in mind um, covering the, the markets and the upcoming budget, of course, as well, which can have an impact. Okay. Um, so I guess if, if we start off, we, we, we cover paying off debts quite a bit, but let's suppose I am debt-free. I've got no unsecured debts. I've probably got a mortgage um, that's going on, but I'm, I'm fortunate enough not to have any other unsecured debts. Now, what should my pension contribution realistically be? Be in terms of a proportion of my wages? Should I be looking to make it as high as possible? How do I decide? Mm. So, okay, so short answer is yes. What I do is I look at it the other way around. I reverse it, I flip it on its head. And I say, put the bank account system in place. Let's look at your expenditure coming out of your bank account. And let's ask the three questions. Do I need this? Do I want this? Can I get the same experience for less? Let's really reduce that down. The minimum, the starting point we work with is 12.5%. 12.5% of your gross income, and that comes from the first working hour of a working day. So the first hour of an eight-hour day, 12.5%, that's what I want you to bank for your future. However, that's not the maximum, that's the minimum. And if you're nowhere near that, you might have to work towards it, but that's where I want you to start, 12.5%. Go through all those expenditure items and then see if we can squeeze some more money out of the bottom as well. Okay, I mean it, it's quite a it, it's quite a chunk that it, it's obviously an eighth as you've highlighted from the working day. It, it, it's a fair chunk of our income, and we want to enjoy life as well, and we want to be able to take holidays and and enjoy Christmas with the kids potentially. It, it's not necessarily an easy level to get to in terms of we're we're projecting ahead sometimes thirty forty years into the future, and. Naturally, I guess, mindset says, but I want to enjoy that money now as well. Sure. And I completely agree. I completely agree. But you want to enjoy your life and your life is a journey. So I'm completely behind. Let's enjoy today. Let's enjoy today. But enjoyment doesn't necessarily have to be materialistic. Okay. Spending time with friends and going out for a walk doesn't have to cost money or lots of money. But we're only talking 12.5%. Does that make sense? So you've still got the other, what is it, 87.5% or something um, available to you. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a starting point. It's a target. There will be people listening to this who will say, that's fine. Walk in the park. I can do that. And there'll be other people saying, Warren, you're off the planet. I have more <laughs> months left over at the end of my paycheck. I don't even pay my bills. And that goes back to step two of the money plan is get financially well, well organized. You've got to go through the five steps, guys. You've got to know what it is you want in life. You've got to get your mindset right. That's why I spend about a third of the book, the money plan, on mindset. Second step, let's get financially well organized. Know where your money's going in, going out. Ask yourself those questions. Get, you know, see if you can get those same items in your bill for less uh, and squeeze as much out as you can. And then in the book, it talks about increasing inflows, trying to get more money coming in. So we can then have more surplus, so we can do this kind of thing. Um, yeah. You know, we do have to really focus on, it'd be easy for me to go along with the flow and be nice and just be the guy everyone likes and say, yeah, don't worry, just put less away. <laughs> it's not true. You have to put more away. We've got to put this money away. And 12.5% is a starting point. I want you to potentially go higher. If you're a late starter, if you're listening to this and you're in your 50s or potentially 60s and you've got a little pension, you've got to make big sacrifices big sacrifices to put more money away so you can boost your pension income so it lasts longer in your retirement. Okay, and is it, just, just finally on this, is it influenced at all by the employer contribution? So I think under auto enrollment at the moment, I think that's now 2%, that's gone down to a kind of 3% um, personal contribution. If my employer is generous and gives me 5%, does that mean I can reduce my contribution or should I, is that 12 and a half percent still the minimum? My belief is 12 and a half percent is the minimum. However, okay. I am realistic and I will say that if you're employed, I was with some employers that they pay 15% into the pension scheme. 
which is wonderful. Wow. Yeah, great. So if you've got that level of money going in, then you might then make the decision, well, I'm going to redirect my 12.5% onto my mortgage. But remember, if, let me backtrack a little bit. When I talk about the 12.5%, this is your snowball. So the way I work my finances with my clients is I go through each individual expenditure item and reduce them as much as possible whilst they're maintaining a good lifestyle. So they've got a surplus left over. And then we take that surplus and we allocate it 40, 40, 20. So once that unsecured debt is repaid, we allocate it 40, 40, 20. 40% 40 of the money goes on to their mortgage as an overpayment. 40% of the money goes into their retirement plan for their future. And 20%, hits the nail on the head, what you said, goes back to themselves so they can enjoy today. So although 12.5% does seem a big chunk of money in, to start off with, okay, what I'm trying to do is get your mindset shift from 1% or 2% to a bigger figure. It's really 40% of that onto your mortgage, 40% of that into your pension, 20% of that comes back to you for enjoyment, to improve yourself, going to do a course, going to learn something new, maybe learn an instrument or something, go and take holidays and do experiences. Okay, yeah, so I guess that makes that mindset shift a little easier then as, a, as we're trying to put a bit more away. Okay, and, and bringing this into more topical stuff, we've got the budget coming up, suddenly coming around very quickly, uh, the 29th of October, I think it is. Monday, yeah. And, yeah, and there are, there are often, I know, I know you've talked about, there are often rumours about potential changes to pension legislation with the budget, and that can happen very quickly. So what, what, what's the deal there? Okay, so the biggest concern that's happened pretty much every single year since I've been a financial planner is that they're going to scrap higher rate tax relief or they're going to tinker with how the tax relief works on pensions. Okay, will this happen? I don't know. I don't see his budget. But if you are at all concerned with it, make your pension contributions early. So you have between you watching this video on the 29th of October to squeeze your pension contributions in before the budget. If you can do that, if you're planning to make a payment later in the year, do it sooner rather than later, just in case in the budget he or she, he removes tax relief or does something drastic with pensions. I don't see it. They've got a lot on their plate with Brexit, but they might do. They need to find more money. You know, the, yeah. Okay. And should we should we be worried at all about when it comes to the state pension? There's always a lot of rumours, or, or lately there's been a lot of rumours, we're still in a lot of debt as a country. Should we be worried about that potentially disappearing altogether in the future? Okay, so go back to set one. It's all about mindset. Remember, first thing, I know why you're saying it, but we only worry about those things we can control. Okay, so there's no point worrying about it per se, but I would be attentive to it. I would be mindful of it. And that goes back to, there's even more reason you need to put 12.5% away into your pension, because if they remove the state pension, then you're more reliant on your own resources to fund for retirement. Now, when I say remove the state pension, I don't think they will ever remove what you've accrued to date. So if you've been saving into the state pension, paying national insurance contributions over, over the lower earnings limit up until now, it's unlikely they will ever remove that. There'll be so much backlash. They could do one or two things or a combination of both. They could stop future accrual. So you've got 20 years in the scheme, they say, that's all you're going to get. You're not going to get any future calls. And you need 35 years under the new scheme. Or the other thing they could do is they could make it a, a benefit and they could means test it. And they could say, well, okay, well, if you've got certain assets, which typically if you own a home, you're going to be outside of that, you're going to be in that remit anyway. Um, they might say, well, okay, you're not going to get any um, or less of a proportion of it. If I was a betting man, it would be they would reduce, not stop, they would reduce future accruals um, and make it more difficult to accrual. But... I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. It's political suicide. Really, they need to address um, final salary pension schemes for civil servants before they do that. Okay. Um, and and let's, let's take this then onto the markets, because the markets have been in the news again over this, this past week or two. There was a, a, quite a drop, quite a substantial drop, the, the biggest for a little while um, in the US and, and around the world. And it's very easy to think of the stock markets as this, this plaything of the rich and famous and where money makes more money. But the reality is that all of us with a pension are effectively investing in the stock market already. Yeah. Now, we've talked before about, and, and you've kind of just covered, we can't worry too much about things that we can't control. But 
should we be concerned again? Is there is, is there a, a bigger market correction coming? Because they they did they did then pick up very quickly again after after the drop. Um, should we be worrying about these things? And and also, if we're looking to invest extra money outside our pension, is, is it a bad time? Should I be waiting? Okay, okay. great great questions. Um, I guess the first thing what we do is we say, what can I control? Of my stock market investment, what can I control? So I can't control the FTSE, I can't control the London Stock Exchange, I can't control the S&P or the New York Stock Exchange, but what I can control is my asset allocation. So I can control how I invest my money. So what you need to is you need to look at your portfolio of investments, whether that's your pension, might be with just your employer, might be your pension and your stocks and shares ISA, it might be wider than that. And then you need to say, am I taking an acceptable amount of risk based on my risk tolerance? And my risk capacity. Now, my risk tolerance is okay. How much can it fall before I start worrying about it at night and stop sleeping well and start getting grumpy? Okay, that's my tolerance. How much can it fall before I worry? And my capacity is how much can it fall before it starts affecting my lifestyle? Before it starts affecting what I can buy and I can afford? Have I got time for it to recover? So, how you can address that very simply in yourself is how much can it fall before you begin to feel uncomfortable? A 100% stock market exposure portfolio, which I would imagine very few of you have got watching this, is likely to fall 50% during its lifetime. And it's likely, depending on your duration, more than once, you know, multiple times. So a 100% stock market portfolio with 50%. So a 50% stock market portfolio is likely to fall about 25%. Now these are rough guides. So depending where you sit, put it into pounds terms. If you've got 100,000 pounds saved up, if you looked at it in a couple of years and it was 50,000 pounds, look at your duration to retirement, how are you gonna feel? Are you gonna be worried? Are you gonna be feeling gutted? Are you gonna feel upset? If that's the case, you've got too much stock market exposure. You need to reduce it, okay? But remember, when investing, time is your friend, and that's where capacity comes in. If you've only got seven years or less before you're gonna to need to access this money, then really you should be reducing your stock market exposure not coming out of the stock market, but reducing it so you're not taking so much risk because your capacity time frame is shorter. Real rule of thumb, and if there are other financial planners watching this, they'll probably shoot me down for saying it, but you guys need some kind of guidance is 100 minus your age. It's a great rule of thumb. So what we're saying is when you're in your 20s, 100 minus 20, 80% of the money you probably can allow to be in the stock market because you've got all those years, 40 plus years until you need access to it. But when you flip it around the other side into your 50s, 50% 50 of the stock market, 100 minus 50, 50% 50 of the stock market, because you've got less time. But remember, when you're in your 80s, that still leaves 80 minus 100, 20% of the stock market. So we're never completely coming out of the stock market, because stock market is our return. Stock market is our driver, our growth. And with inflation picking up, we need more access to it. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. I think that's a, that's a pretty good overview for a... For a Good whirlwind tour in a few minutes of uh, the budget, the stock market, pensions, and everything else in between. Fantastic. All right. Thanks very much, as always, Warren. Speak soon. Take care. Bye.